the Ganges River is the sacred river of India. It flows through the holy city of Banaras, also known as Varanasi. Incidentally, it is here that the burned ashes of Mahatma Gandhi, Nehru, Shastri, and other late Indian leaders were sprinkled. Notice how filthy the water is. It's teeming with diseases. Yet to its bank each year flock hundreds of thousands of weary pilgrims to bathe. No one could tell us how long this old man had been coming down to the river. We only knew that he came daily, hoping that if he washed enough times, he might rid himself of the burden of sin he felt and find peace in his heart. People who live in great darkness spiritually. But mainly we want to tell you about the work of Christ in India, and I know of no better place to begin than with our school children because their lives are changed so drastically by him. Now this is the story of another little fellow named Swami Das, seven years old and taking care of cattle for a wealthy landowner. He's going to do it for the rest of his life. He has no other future before him, except for the fact that one day his parents came to know Jesus Christ. About six months after that, we began the school. One day Swami Das came to Mrs. Roberts and, Ms. and Reverend Moon and asked if he might join it. They said, why certainly Swami Das, we'd be glad to have you come to our school, but you must pay your share of the fees. Well, he went away. We didn't know whether he'd return or not. But the next day, he did come back, bringing not only his fees, but also a nice white shirt and a big happy smile, for Swami Das knew this was the beginning of an entirely new life for him. Every day at the school, we began the morning hour with a devotional period. Here they are clapping their hands and singing a Telugu bhajana, a lyric in their own language, and then they kneel to pray. Reverend Moon asked Swami Das to pray that morning, and while he took pictures, he prayed a real sweet prayer. He said, God, thank you for letting me come to the school here. Now this is the 1986 model Maytag washing machine. The children soak their clothes in water and soap and then beat upon the stones till either they're clean or fall to pieces. Then they put them on the grass to dry. While their clothes are drying, they line up to take showers. By the time they dry off under the heat of the sun, their clothes are dry and they put on, once again, the only pieces of clothing they have. One little fellow here is ironing another boy's shirt for him and is using a charcoal iron. Every day after school, there's an hour of field work for our boys. They help raise a fair amount of the food that is eaten in the hostel. They prepare the fields, plant the seeds, weed the crops, and later bring in the harvest. Then the girls go to work on it. You remember Jesus talking about two women grinding, one would be taken and the other left? Well, here they are, just as in the days of Christ, Sabagyam and Devama. Watch Sabagyam now. She'll take a handful of Jawar in her right hand and drop it in the hole on the top stone. The top stone turns on the bottom stone, crushing it, and it comes out as flour around the edges. In the background is Vanolia Joshiah pounding rice. In the foreground, you'll notice two little girls are winnowing the rice, cleaning it in their baskets, and two other little girls are kneading the dough from which they will make chapatis a thin whole wheat bread. Two other little girls are cleaning Indian vegetables for the curry. Now most of them have never known what it was to go to bed at night with a full stomach. We don't understand that here in America, do we? For the first time in their lives, they knew what it was to have all they wanted to eat day after day in our school. Even then, they cleaned up their plates, as you can tell. And here is little Salochana as she eats her curry and rice in good Indian style. Now out in India we have nine months of almost total drought and three months of almost steady rain called the monsoons. If ever the monsoons fail us, we are in serious trouble. One year that happened. No rain and our school well went dry on us. So some of the boys and Reverend Moon went down into it, about 45 deep feet deep actually, took sledgehammers and drills and bits to try and deepen it and strike a better source of supply. The way this works is that there is usually water in the well so that when the bucket is lowered it will lean over on its side and fill up automatically. On the bottom of the bucket is a long leather nozzle. All the water will drain out through it. 
Now someone always wants to know what it is that pulls the bucket up to the surface. And here is your answer. A pair of bullocks. They march down the little decline, pull the bucket up, then they stop, back up, and the bucket goes back down again. Here it comes, full of water, draining into the underground passage to the reserve water tank. Now, while our school was, well was dry, we formed the original bucket brigade with our children, and they lined up carrying water from a nearby well to the school. The children greatly enjoy putting on dramas. And here you'll see the Christmas story. Now notice how the sheep and the cattle and the shepherds are much closer to the original Christmas than we could ever have here in America. We did have one problem, the baby Jesus wouldn't stop crying. Our boys greatly enjoy the Indian dance called the Chittakala Bhajana. They take the Chittakalu, those instruments in their hands, clap them keeping rhythm while they dance about singing the story of a little man in the New Testament called Zacchaeus. Twice a year at our school we have sports day. We all look forward to that. Here are two of our little fellows lined up for the three-legged race. Now you think you could run fast if you had three legs, you just watch them. They really move out, don't they? And then comes the obstacle course, and they're off. Well, most of them are. Now the sack race. Now remember that our little fellows never knew anything about games like this out in the villages, and here obviously they're having the time of their lives. Our little folk bob for jalebis and Indian candy. Our older girls every day after school get out and play diligently their favorite game of basketball. Some of them become fairly good at it too. Our boys, after they've finished their field work, will usually play volleyball. Now one day we were driving along in our Jeep station wagon and we stopped and picked up just a few hitchhikers. Someone is saying to himself, oh, they're going through the back door and coming out the front. But that isn't true. Every one of those children was inside the Jeep on that trip. And yet they come. And here they are, all lined up. Together we had 34 boys and girls inside that Jeep, which incidentally is a commentary on a, how light of weight and undernourished in body they are when most of them first come to the school. When we left the school, we had the joy of putting it into the hands of a fine Indian Christian. This is his son, Prem Kumar. And here's the principal of the school, Mr. B.D. Paul and his lovely wife, Sumitra. Mr. and Mrs. Paul are fine, dedicated Christians. They are well educated. Mr. Paul has his master's degree and his wife is a trained teacher. They have done an excellent job. Here are the teachers who have assisted them, seven lady teachers and five men, all of them Christians and educated for teaching, all of them coming from the villages themselves so they understand something of the problems that the children face. Uh, in the classroom they sit on the floor on mats. Each child has a desk in front of him. Shobarani, the teacher, is teaching the third standard. Now contrast, if you can, the lives of these are boys and girls in the school with what their lives would have been had they lived them out in the villages in the midst of some of the darkness and fear and superstition that you saw in the first part of the picture. And then you begin to understand just a little bit of why we believe that this investment in the lives of our boys and girls is the kind of investment that is going to pay eternal dividends. Aren't they a happy, clean-looking bunch of children, though? And behind every boy and girl that you see there is someone back in America whose gift of $75 or a year or a dollar and a half a week is making it possible for them to be in school with us. These are our older girls in their lovely saris. 